everyone, so I'm going to do an art book review of three books. Two are video game art books and one being an illustrated storybook. A lot of my influences uh, actually first came from video games because I used to be a heavy gamer. And uh, one of my favorite games that I'm going to feature right now is, um, well, the, the art that's coming from is a Nier Automata, a game for the PlayStation 4. And it actually is from an, an obscure series that I used to be a big fan of before it became super popular. And another game called El Shaddai, which is an advent, uh, a, a Japanese adventure take on a biblical story. And I find that interesting because that's not often done. Often, like a lot of Christian, Judaic mythologies are often come from a more Western perspective. But this particular game is made by a Japanese game studio. So I thought this would be interesting to talk about. And this illustrated storybook called Water Snakes by Tony Sandoval. Um, I don't quite remember what the story was about. It's a couple years ago that I got this book, but I just really loved the artwork. So I figured I'd start with that, something that's easy on the eyes. I'm not gonna go through the whole story. I just like that the style is very different, not something that I typically uh, look at or not really necessarily up my alley, but I just love how expressive and uh, dark it gets, especially when this main character goes into this fantasy world where apparently this legion of knights evolved from teeth, apparently, and they basically just battle creatures. That's supposed to be uh, symbolic or metaphorical, I'm not sure. By the middle of the story, it's quite uh, brutal and I just love the uh, the more darker tone and atmosphere because one of my favorite color schemes is often uh, black, white, and red. That's something I quite enjoy uh, from the storybook. And I got this book primarily because I wanted something a little bit different, but I still enjoy the themes and the, the style that often uh, goth gothic, horror, or just plain dark fantasy. So that is why I wanted to share this with you and a lot of uh, skulls and skeleton, skeletal figures. That's primarily why I like this. Now moving on to El Shaddai. I really enjoy various mythologies even within Judaism and Christianity. And what I love about this game is that it's it's a has a very simple gameplay and its focus is often on the visuals. And the best way I would describe this game is having a light LSD trip. And basically you play as Enoch, a prophet from the Bible, is known to be the first prophet to have been invited into the kingdom of God. And there's only one passage from the Bible in the book of Genesis, uh, but there is a book of Enoch that's not canon to the mainstream Bible. And that's primarily where uh, the story takes place. But it also goes over, I would say, it, it talks about the Flood. So it's more like a prequel to the Flood. And it's basically like a fan fiction where you play as Enoch and he has to find and seek out the fallen angels. And I will just quickly go back to that. Okay, so here are, wait, oh, here are the, fun, uh, the fallen angels. Um, well, here are the, the main angels. So what I love about this is basically the artistic rendition. The ones that are not fallen are in the form of swans, apparently. And since it's in Japanese and in this fictional language, I would guess that one of them is Michael. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. And here are the fallen angels. And their designs are quite interesting. It's very line-based and a lot of uh, hatching, very uh, linear, almost like one of those pen drawings that you do in, in an elementary school on your notebook. So that's what it reminded me of, so that's why I find it interesting. Yeah, I especially like this design and this angel, I forget. Oh yeah, it has it has the English name here. So this is Sariel, and the ones that I've shown you earlier, that's Ezekiel, and then this is Azazel. And if I go back to the, the previous ones, it doesn't have the English names. Actually, wait, I lied. So one of them is Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel. So they're in, they are in the form of swans. And apparently it's because the fallen angels wanted to be part of the human world, and that's why they took on a more human form, is my guess. Uh, here are the designs of the creatures and other beings that you fight, which I really like. And here are the different holy weapons that you get to use 
as Enoch, which is pretty cool. So I just love sometimes therapeutic to go through the different colorful worlds. But one of my favorites is actually the world of the Nephilim. I don't know if they have more blown up imagery, but I'm just going to go through some random artwork here. Oh, here's Enoch. So we have his holy armor, which is, I would guess, holy, angelic, feather-like designs. So you can see here his, I, I would assume it's the lapel part of his clothing in the form of angel wings. So I do like that. And apparently this is Lucifer that you talk to. And he's pretty much the only messenger, like sort of middleman to God. And he talks to him through his cell phone, which is a nice concept. And apparently he's a good guy in this story, because Lucifer is often, of course, represented as um, more of a villain in a lot of stories. And here are some random concepts of the angels, the non-fallen angels, in their human form. So this is pretty much what I just wanted to show you from this art book. So moving on to Nier, this is, I would describe this as like gothic cyberpunk. <laughs> I'm not sure, but it takes place like a couple thousand years in the future. And what I basically love about this is the character designs again. I love the more dark fantasy or gothic atmosphere, uh, even set in a cyberpunk futuristic uh, time frame. So here are the character designs. And I love that there's some mechs in here too. And this book is mainly more of a description of like the, the maps and layout of uh, the world inside the game. But they do have some background art here. So I do like that it's very dystopian and a lot of them are pretty like simple. It's like clearly unfinished, but again, it's just a concept. So I like that some parts are not completely fully rendered to give it that just a little bit of that artistic modern touch. And here are more character designs. So in the original Nier, not Nier Automata, these characters exist in there too. And so what's funny is that when this game came out, it made the entire franchise more well known. And so uh, there are memes going out that showcase like, oh, there's this game and like, wait, there's this other game. And that's also part of another obscure, like there's, there's an entire multiverse, which I will not get into, but I can talk about that in another art book vlog review. Yeah. And then there's some, of course, more brightened background and areas of the game. And there's also an abandoned theme park which is one of my favorite places, and I especially like the, the artwork from there too. And then there are some robots, of course. I really like how uh, they feature different artists for this game. For example, the artist who does the, the mech work designs is different from the character designs, and uh, sometimes they would have another artist to redraw them for different purposes. It's not shown in here, but uh, anyway, the artist is Akihiko Yoshida, and he's also known for doing other games as well, not just Nier. I mean, he's been around the industry since the 90s, so a, a huge fan of his work. Now, the other artist, I believe, is Fujisaka Kamihiko. He's done other games made by the same studio, and they're t I'm actually not quite sure if he is the one who did the characters, or if Yoshida did, because uh, sometimes their art can be similar. But Yoshida is more simplistic when he draws the faces. I know this front cover was made by him, but I'm not quite sure if the character designs were done. Yeah, again, I love like the black and red uh, scheme, especially for this character. And uh, yeah, so here are some mech work some robots and spaceships. So that's about it. So these are the games in a random storybook that have influenced me. I hope you enjoyed that. So hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see more and also check out my other vlogs as well.